Hello, beautiful souls. It has been a heck of a week. I have been keeping the baddies busy every single day that I've recorded a video, which has been every day this week. They have worked overtime to try to stop it and failed. So this is the last of the Sophia Dragon Tribe. Ascendant Master Divine Feminines to be showcased from yours truly. So far, this is your first time tuning into this playlist. We have covered how the Sophia Dragon Tribe came to be by Mother Sophia, Isis, Hathor, Green Tara, Mother Mary, Magdalene, Kuan Yin, and going out in grand style, pun intended, my soul grand, white buffalo calf woman. She of a thousand white clouds and thundering beings offers key code seven. As a divine feminine ascendant master mentor, I teach you how to live in the right relations with yourself, your community, and your beautiful planet. My key code seven is a Shekinah light transmission that gives and guides and protects the prophetic indigenous spiritual pathways on earth. In my most recent <clears throat> incarnation as divine feminine Christ embodiment, I came as white buffalo calf woman to the people of the great plains of North America. I seeded knowledge of who I am and a prophetic lineage <clears throat> of medicine bundles, teachings, and rites of initiation that I delivered in my holy transmission to the Sioux. I will share in my own words the lightning medicine I delivered to the hearts of this great people. Lightning medicine is a term they use for like it comes out of the sky. It drops in. It's spontaneous. There's no preparation for it. It just happens. When I descended from the sky to take holy woman form, my gaze reflected the angelic DNA of my oversoul and the thunder being with eyes that shifted from black as night to earthen brown and storm gray to clear blue. Ooh, my pages are stuck together. Here we go. Grandmother spider wove my body together with radiant red earth threads, threads of silver stardust. My hair moved from when with, within it, black as a raven and blessed with the words of eagles. I wove rain down my black, my back and sun rays in my shawl. My dress was fashioned from the leather of white clouds. Adorning my crown was a single white eagle feather that ordained my return to the surface of earth. When my feet touched the ground, soft white moccasins appeared around them, beat it with the prophecy of whirling rainbow children to come. The sweet rumbling of soft distant thunder echoed with the victory trills of the sky grandmothers watching over me from above. I traveled eastward as the sun was about to rise. I saw two men hunting with bows and arrows looking for buff buffalo. They saw sight of me along the skyline. I appeared as a roving star and drew them closer to me. As they came closer, I read the heart of each man. One stood tall and walked with a pure heart, guided by a prayer to honor all life. He was a wise protector for his people. The other man was ill with sickness of separation that had hardened his heart and blinded his true sight, his third eye. He was greatly feared by all, and he enjoyed inciting fear. Both honored warriors wanting to return to their starving people with meat from a buffalo. They drew closer, and the first man saw me through eyes of a pure heart. He perceived me as a tall, white buffalo coming from the great white light. He heard angels all around him. 
It was only when he got closer to me and he saw in a startled look that I was a beautiful maiden in form. He recognized me as a sacred messenger and prepared his heart to pray. And I heard, be at peace. The second man, he saw me as a lost maiden. His blinded perception allowed for black ravenous desire to overtake his hardened heart. It proved to be a bottomless vessel. No bounty of war could ever assuage his incurable emptiness. The only temporary relief was to feast upon another soul. He began to calculate how many steps it would take him to overcome me and take my body by force. Number two, man, the evil dark man, declared his intention to warrior number one, the man with the pure heart. My friend, what an opportunity this is. We should take this woman now and be with her. You know what that means, right? Warrior one. Oh no, my friend, can you not see? This is the holiest of women. Do not think such thoughts. Humble yourself and prepare your heart as she is coming to us now. I do not know what she will say, but keep your eyes upon the ground and honor of that which has, has sought us out. The evil one says, what kind of man are you? Buffalo calf woman. I was now only a short distance from the two warriors. The first one knelt down and began to pray. He tried, but couldn't take his eyes from me. I carried a large bundle wrapped in white beaded buckskin. As I removed it gently and lowered it down to rest on the grass, my eyes fixed upon the darkness within the second man. I quietly spoke incantations of the sky grandmothers, which destroys all darkness of ill men, and then welcomed him to greet me. At that invitation, he lunged forward to overtake me. I summoned the radiant light of my Holy Spirit, which immediately descended over the man's body in a great white cloud. I spoke unconditional mercy and compassion for his great suffering. I announced that I would now relieve him of his suffering by commanding his soul to return to Wakantaka, the great spirit, where all emptiness is fulfilled. Within my invincible compassion and holy light, his soul found the relief that dark appetites could never satisfy. He spontaneously gave up his body and his soul went into the light and I and he disintegrated in form. When the cloud retreated, there was a pile of ash and bones at my feet. Tears rolled down the face of the remaining warrior. He looked down and asked for grace and pleaded to be let go back to his, to his village in peace and holiness. White Buffalo Calf Woman. Behold the last prayer of that man as a reminder to your men. The Holy Mother is within all. No man needs to take from a woman to remember what is already within him. I see that you're of pure heart. You may return to your village like you asked, and in return, you will carry this message of my coming to your people. Hear my words. Tell you, your chief, to prepare for my arrival. I bear a bundle of great importance that will set your people's feet upon a sacred path for the future of generations to come. Prepare a great lodge and gra gather all your people and make your hearts ready for my arrival. The village prepared for a week. And on the seventh day, a red tail hawk declared that today was a good day to live. I saw a beautiful white fawn buffalo. When I entered into the village, some only saw the white buffalo form. Others perceived me as a holy woman, all in white with a single feather in my hair. The gathered people welcomed me by painting and parting a great path 
to the Grand Lodge. As I passed into the lodge, I fully shifted into my human form as white buffalo woman, so all that gathered could hear me speak. I walked sunwise around the clock, around the lodge, making my contact with every man, woman, and child as a unifying blessing to their heart. I stopped before the chief and guided a woman to make a cedar offering to the fire and then spoke. Within this bundle is a sacred pipe, a most holy instrument of grace as such. It must always be treated with the highest reverence and honor of your covenant with me. Your reverence of this pipe will deepen your reverence for yourselves, one another, and all life will deepen as of love of this pipe, praying with it. And as I will instruct you, your people will be initiated as keepers of a prophetic path for communicating the mysteries of the great spirit. I deliver this holy vessel directly from Wakantaka who sent me as a manifestation of your people's prayer to be of great service to all things, even to the ends of the four corners of this world. The sacred pipe called Chinumpa, I taught them of Mother Earth, that we all come together, that we all stand upon Earth as brothers and sisters, and the belief allows you to receive direct from the Great Spirit. I taught them that their lives are sacred and that every day that you live is a holy day. Every dawn is a gift to be honored. Every sunset, another opportunity to give thanks to everyone and everything that stands on earth's sacred ground. I taught how pipes teachings are to be shared with the community, with other tribes, reconciling the challenges by praying together and using the sacred peace pipe, sharing a deeper level of communication with great spirit. Prophecies then began to flow out over my tongue from my heart. I shared how many two leggeds will forget who they are. First, they will be enemies. They will be sick and they will be suffering. In the final stage of the prophecy, the two leggeds will return, asking for medicine of the sacred pipe. They will first want to know our teachings. When the two leggeds purify their hearts and walk away from darkness and separation, I will return and physically walk among you again. My return will signify that the great prayer Wakantaka has had for the two legged people will be fulfilled, and the new prophecy for that same prayer will arise. Children from the stars will walk the earth carrying a living chanumpa within them in those final days i will reveal the fullness of my light upon the earth and these starseed children will recognize my voice and embody my new prophecies the great spirit that fills this pipe will flow over their tongues and they will speak a deluge of prayers and prophecies that will free this world from the dark reign of previous ages this is, my, is loosely talking. This is our soul family mission. This is our soul path. If you are soul family, if you feel like you're a soul family, if this resonates with you and brings you to tears, you're on the same mission. To walk away from darkness, pivot from that, discover the light of truth within you, Set yourself free and spread the word. Speak your truth. It fulfills one of the new prophecies for new earth. White Buffalo Catwoman. After circling the lodge four more times, I walked out the way I had arrived. I shape-shifted into a reddish-brown buffalo calf, and I waited for everyone to come out of the lodge. I kicked up my feet and hooves and took a playful roll filled with joy and bliss. When I stood back up, I turned into a pure white and I walked a good distance as a white buffalo calf. 
With the eagle's cry, I turned all black and bowed to honor in the four directions for their support of my prophecies. Upon completing my prayers, I turned my back and into the form of white buffalo calf woman, and I waved to the village, and I declared to them, I will always be with you. You will see me with your eyes once again when I walk as a white buffalo on your earth. And with that, my spirit was set free of form. Wherever Sophia asked me to descend as her messenger and embodiment of earth, I appear as the Holy Spirit made of flesh. I represent an ancient and powerful order from the sky world called the sky grandmothers who oversee the evolutionary growth of all species on earth from beyond space and time continuum. Where most ascendant masters originate from other star nations, I am an ascendant master whose order is native to this planet. I was present for the conception of Mother Earth, and I will remain here and with her until the blinding light of her full ascension. The spontaneous and sacred appearance of a new genetic species of white buffalo in North America is the first fulfillment of my spoken prophecy. These white buffalo are the first Holy Spirit embodiments of my Sophia Christ consciousness returning and manifesting once again on earth. I don't know if you recognize or you know, but there's been um, video footage, multiple pictures. You can find this stories pretty easily in Yellowstone. There is a white buffalo calf. There were a few actually that were born um, over the spring this past year. And um, the many, many indigenous nations around the area are doing a lot of um, rituals, powwow ceremonies about the prophecy being fulfilled. White buffalo calf woman. My key code seven is ordained to become a guiding light transmission for millions of light workers around the world that are here to embody the way of reconciliation, of integrity, and of sovereignty. I am here to mentor you as a way shower for global peace by activating your embodiment to command miracles and fulfill the prophecy through the purity of your heart. There's so much more to discover about my soul grand white buffalo calf woman. I invite you to do so. Um, again, her key code is seven in the Sophia code, but there's a lot of information that you can actually find about her. There's some beautiful artwork that the tribes have passed down. Um, I do recall in one cringeworthy moment, one of the fundamentalists that I've encountered on this journey said, you're exactly what's wrong with the world today. You worship this made up white cow woman. Oh, to be there when they find out the truth. White Buffalo Calf Woman's soul essence is the twin flame, divine feminine of Archangel Metatron. Archangel Metatron is my poppy. They are what I would call quite the power couple their presence is with us daily multiple times whether we want it or not I think that's probably like most grandparents I don't know I didn't grow up with grandparents in this live stream but they are with us now and they are loving they are firm they are nurturing they're funny and they get frustrated at at the darkness, the attempts that the darkness makes to harm their children, their grandchildren, their great grandchildren, just for being light workers, way showers, for speaking our truth, which is their truth, which is the truth. It's frustrating, but it really does just fuel us on. Because, quite honestly, if what we had to say, wasn't true and accurate you think they would try so hard to stop us yeah, i don't either together we are a very faithful loving compassionate and kind family 
who defends our family, our prophecy, and all things with Source Creator and Mother Sophia at the center. I ask my grand white buffalo calf woman for a message for you today. And here it is. Now is not the time for division. We need to be united. Love is the key to everything. Love is the key to your faith. You must be authentic and strong. And you are never alone. You have legions beside you. In all moments, all you have to do is believe and ask for their assistance. The law of consent, universal laws, the law of one. Law of consent. And I'll just briefly touch on this. As much help as we have, I honestly can't tell you how many beings are in my immediate spirit team. There are literal legions. None of them can take the lead on my life. None of them. As powerful as they are. It is up to me to ask for them to help support me as I walk the path of the way. In doing that, it is tumultuous. There are many hurdles. There's lots of highs and lots of lows. They support me while I'm on that path. The path to ascension is very difficult, but it's not impossible. And it is faith-filled. A little bit of courage, a whole lot of faith. If you are struggling because you've been doing what everyone outside of you has told you to do your entire life, it might be because they've been pushing you down the wrong path and you're not meant to be there. And your entire being is telling you to turn around and go the other way. I invite you to stop by violetlotusenergy.com and check out our services. The first thing you need to do is a QET session to get yourself clear. Once you are clear, then all of the other services are available to you with regards to your higher self. They get a final say and the Ascendant Masters weigh in on whether you're ready for it or not. I wanted to give a rundown of some of my soul sisters that work with me at Violet Lotus Energy. Ariel helps develop teas and salves. She's also an advocate for those in and dealing with abuse in their relationships and families and can offer some one-on-one -on -one coaching there. Aurora, the fairy queen, she develops teas and tinctures, salves, vision boards based on your energy signature and coffee ground readings. They're very fun. I don't know how she sees all that. It's just total ability. And she sees a lot. <laughs> Anita, Crystal grids and much was wisdom. She is one of the elders of our family. She provides comic relief, loving support, and she is always in tune to what's happening with her family. Alakin. Healing frequencies like scalar, rife inner, inner frequencies for healing and more coming online every day. Anna, she is queen of the animals and works with all animals and earth aurelia many services many services she is who you will work with for deep heart chakra healing she works with the sophia dragon tribe and she does one-on-one -on -one sessions with mother sophia she facilitates that for you and she does readings and meditations she's amazing Antoinette, she works with the elements and all things there. And Athena, divine justice and courage queen. She's a counselor to all. She's loving and compassionate and empathetic. And like most of us has not had an easy life, but sees the, the soul family, feels the love, the kindness, the compassion, and knows what that difference has made in her life. She's absolutely there to assist you in your own struggles, hurdles. I invite you again, violetlotusenergy.com. I hope you've enjoyed this series of the Sophia Dragon Tribe 
Divine Feminine Ascendant Master Showcases. And I will see you again tomorrow for another exciting video. Take care.